China's robot tax industry is among the fastest growing in the world, and Pony AI is a leading player in the sector. The company was listed in the U.S. in 2024, and its shares will be due list in Hong Kong on November 6. Today, we are joined by its founder and CEO, James Pong. James started Pony AI in 2016 in Silicon Valley. The company operates robot taxi, robot truck, and provides autonomous driving solutions, mostly in China, but also in the U.S., Europe, and the Middle East. James, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Pony AI received the first citywide permit to run robot taxi in Shenzhen. What does it actually mean? How soon do you think we will be travel to Shenzhen and get a robot taxi? Um, this is actually a very important milestone for Pony and for the industry as a whole. Uh, the license actually allowed us to operate robot taxi in whole Shenzhen. Currently, we actually already operate in the west part of Shenzhen, uh, mostly in Baoan and the Nansan district. The permit we just obtained actually allowed us to introduce the latest uh, generation of our autonomous driving vehicles, the Gen 7, to the public. This is actually exactly the same model where we used to the public, and it will be fully 100% uh, autonomous grade components. And uh, so, so essentially, we will launch the Gen 7 to the public uh, in a few days. and. Uh, as a, as a general public, when you, whenever you go to Shenzhen, you should be able to use Pony AI app or use some third-party uh, ride-hailing apps, and you'll be able to enjoy the robotaxi rides. Um, what do you see at the moment as the biggest hurdle to the wider adoption of robotaxi in China? Is it technology or is it regulation? How is this compared to the US and the rest of the world? Essentially, this is a brand new industry. It's a br brand new technology. It's a brand new regulation. And to the public, it's also new. So I think for all three factors I mentioned, the, the product and technology, the government support, and uh, the riders or the passengers uh, recognition, I think all three are important. Because this is such a complex system, uh, at any given point, it's not one single factor that prevents us to move forward. So f using our past history, we always, uh, it's like a spiral going up. We, we solve one problem and uh, de-risk a certain factor and we move forward. So, so essentially, to, to a simple answer to your question is, I don't see a single determining factor that prevent us to move forward. But it, it's because the system is so complex, it, it will use its gradual pace. In terms of the global landscape, China and the US are the only two countries that have large scale, fully driverless commercial operations. Um, because of the success, because of uh, uh, the safety and uh, ease of use, uh, I'm pretty confident other countries will follow. What do you think of the robot taxi uh, industry overall in China and in the world? Who do you see as the competitors? The whole industry is so brand new. The, uh, all the players are currently okay, working tirelessly trying to move the technology, develop new technology to make autonomous driving safer, more comfortable, more efficient. And at the same time, uh, essentially, we're all pushing the boundaries for the regulation. Globally, I think China and the U.S. certainly lead the way, and they are uh, some good and leading players in these two uh, markets. Uh, and uh, I, I think because the potential and the benefits of autonomous driving is so huge, I'm, I'm pretty sure there will be other players coming into the field as well. There have been concerns about safety with autonomous driving. What would you say to people who are concerned? I think it's naturally people might be concerned because it's so brand new. And uh, whenever you see there's no one behind the driving wheel, you may be concerned. But several factors I can provide. One is all our vehicles have 
obtained licenses from the government, where we actually have gone through a stringent testing and validation process. So essentially, we already get the endorsement from the government. Secondly, from all our op current operation, uh, we have data to prove that our technology is much safer than the average driver on the road. Uh, we have uh, enough of testing. We have mo more than uh, 55 million kilometers of autonomous driving on the road. Uh, we have a great safety track record. And uh, so, so essentially, that's the second point. The third point is, uh, from a practical point of view, whenever we see a new passenger who have never ridden autonomous driving before, whenever they are in our vehicle, Initially, they might be a little bit nervous, very curious, but typically after three to five minutes, whenever they felt our vehicles actually act like an like a experienced driver, that's the experience we can provide to the passengers. Uh, our driving behavior is, is just like experienced driver. Then that gives them the comfort. Uh, so typically after three to five minutes, the passengers uh, would get very used to it. And, and the, most of the cases, they start taking out their phone and enjoy or, or even take a nap. So my recommendation is that give it a try, take a ride, and you're going to start loving it. Your uh, Pony AI will be due list in Hong Kong this Thursday. Um, why are you choosing Hong Kong? And what do you see Hong Kong uh, role in your future uh, development? Uh, I think Hong Kong is a global uh, leading f uh, financial market. And uh, because our home base is in China, I think listing in Hong Kong will, will definitely help us in terms of branding, in terms of the uh, proximity to our home base. Of course, by listing in Hong Kong also opens up, uh, our broadens our investors' base, a lot more uh, Asian-based or Asian-focused investors can easily uh, invest in us and uh, become a good partner to, to Pony's growth. Thank you for your time today. Uh, you can learn more about this at our website at cmp.com.